If you're learning English, then you most likely have an accent. This is normal. This is what happens when we learn a foreign language, and especially when that language has sounds,、uh, a sound system that is completely different from our own.、Uh, what results from that is an accent. What is an accent? Well, this is a distinctive way of pronouncing. Uh, a language,、uh, especially a pronunciation、uh, that you have that is associated with a particular country or region or even social class. So, this is something that people have when they learn foreign languages. They have an accent, and I guess in this video, I'd like to talk about、uh, whether or not you need to be worried. About your accent,、uh, maybe you have an Italian accent when you speak English, or you have a French accent or a Russian accent. Should you be worried about that? Should you be stressed about that?、Uh, and I'll talk about my opinion about accents and、uh, maybe how much importance we should place on、um, trying to decrease,、uh, reduce. Our accent, and、uh, I'll even give a few tips、uh, at the end about some of the things you can focus on when it comes to pronouncing English words and phrases more naturally. And I'll also just、uh, briefly talk about my pronunciation seminars. I don't talk about them a lot. I usually、uh, mention that I have. A membership with listening training and advanced episodes in which I speak fast, but also、uh, one big part, one component of my membership is my pronunciation training that I give you. So,、uh, if you're interested in improving your pronunciation and sounding、uh, more natural,、uh, like an American English speaker. Then、uh, you'll definitely want to check that out. The link is down below, and I'll just talk a little bit about that at the end as well.、Uh, so let's talk about accents. So first of all, who has an accent? Basically, everyone who is learning English has an accent.、Um, that's not to say that everyone has a really thick accent. And everyone has an accent that's extremely noticeable. No, but、um, pretty much everyone, when they're learning English, and they're not at an extremely high level, let's say,、um, they have some type of accent because the way that they speak English is influenced by their own native language's sound system. Or maybe it's not their native language. Maybe they already speak a language、uh, close to English that they learned as a second language, and then they're using that language's sound system to speak English. Like, for example, I remember I used to have a student who was from Russia, but he spoke German really well because he lived in Austria, and he sounded like a German. When he spoke English, he had like a German accent, even though he was Russian. So、uh, accents can get pretty interesting depending on the person's background. But basically, everyone has an accent when they're learning a foreign language.、Um, I will say this: if the languages have a very similar sound system, then the person learning the language might not have. A distinct accent. So, for example, a Greek、uh, speaker, someone who speaks Greek natively, if they learn Spanish, they're probably not gonna have a really thick accent. That's pretty cool. Like their sounds in Greek,、uh, they carry over to Spanish really well.、Uh, these two、uh, sound systems are very similar. And so, because of that,、um, let's say uh, uh, an American who learns Spanish is probably going to have a much thicker accent when speaking Spanish 
than a Greek person who's learning Spanish, okay? So um, there are some exceptions to this. Like I said, if your language has basically the same sound system as the language that you're learning, you might not have an accent. You'll probably still pronounce things a little bit differently than native speakers, but you won't have this kind of um, overarching uh, difference in everything that you say because all of your sounds are different from that language's sounds. You're not going to have that, like if you're a Greek speaker learning Spanish, for example. So that's uh, a big advantage um, for certain speakers of certain languages who are learning other languages. Okay. Um, however, for the sake of this video, let's just talk about English. Uh, the language that you speak probably doesn't have the same sound system as English. Even the languages that are close to English in terms of their origins, the, the language family, those sound systems are still different. So even if you speak Dutch, if you speak Danish or German or whatever the language is, um, you're probably going to have a somewhat noticeable accent when you speak English. I have this when I speak other languages. I have an accent when I speak Spanish. Uh, I don't think my accent is really thick because I've really tried to reduce my accent, but I have one. I have an accent when I speak Portuguese, uh, and I definitely have an accent when I speak French. Uh, this is something that ugh, is really hard for me. So Spanish pronunciation and Portuguese pronunciation for me are much easier. It's much easier to reduce my accent in those languages. But with French, oh man, it's really hard for me to reduce my accent. So I know exactly how you feel if you feel like you have this really thick accent in English. I know that frustration because I have that 100% um, regarding French. Um, for French, my accent is just not, <laughs> it's not pleasing to my ears. I don't like the way I sound, but I hope to improve that over time. So uh, why do we have accents? Like why do adults have accents when they learn other languages? Is it possible to not have this obstacle? Well, like I said, unless you're learning a language that's really close to yours in terms of the sounds, you can't really avoid this obstacle altogether because it's just part of our our body and our brain, okay? So a baby, when they're born, uh, they are capable of hearing and identifying and really capturing the sounds of all the languages in the world. Like a baby that is a newborn child or let's say a six-month-old baby, an eight eight-month-old baby, um, they can hear like every sound of every language. However, once they uh, really start to develop uh, the language uh, or the sounds of one particular language, like once their brains are focused on just, let's say, English, in the case of the United States, once they're like a year old or I don't know exactly when that happens, I forget, but let's just say when a baby is a little older and they're starting to really just process one language, uh, the language of their parents, uh, then what happens is instead of being open to all of the sounds like they were before, now that window closes and now they can really uh, only, uh, let's say, 100% uh, identify and distinguish the sounds of their one language, right? It's like they started with the capability of 
identifying and, and distinguishing all the sounds of every language. And then as soon as their brain focuses in on one particular language, their native language that they learn, then it shuts and then <laughs> their brain is just, uh, you know, able to 100% identify those sounds of that language. Of course, a child, um, if they move to another country at a young age, they can kind of reopen that window back up and uh, they can eventually learn another language and sound like a native speaker, even if uh, they're not a baby when they moved to the country. Maybe they're just a young child or something like that. Yeah, that can definitely happen for sure. That happens all over the world. It happens um, in many, many cases. But for adults, we don't have this ability anymore. We can't really reopen that window and just be able to hear all the sounds in every language and be able to replicate them perfectly we just can't do that. However, we can, of course, learn to pronounce things correctly in different languages. We can learn the correct mouth position and movement to make. Uh, we can learn to more correctly hear the difference between different sounds, um, hear them more clearly. Of course, we can do that. But there's always going to be this effort involved, there's always going to be uh, this tension or this obstacle um, that comes from the fact that you are operating um, with a sound system that is not yours. And when that's the case, you really have to make the effort to pronounce things correctly, to uh, be able even just to identify the correct sounds. I've had tons of experience with this uh, when I taught in the past with students who uh, simply couldn't hear the difference between two sounds in English, and these two sounds sound very different to me. <laughs> but when my student, or tons of students, uh, I've had this experience many times, when they would hear these two sounds, they would say, it sounds the same. Like they can't hear the difference, okay? That comes from the fact that their ability to recognize sounds is limited to their own native language at that point. And we really have to make the effort to train our brains, train our mouths, train our ears to really be able to identify and reproduce sounds in another language. So this is the reality of language learning, okay? I'm not saying all this to discourage you or to really just give you a bunch of bad news because this is something we all deal with. As adult language learners, this is something we need to accept. And I think that the quicker you accept this, uh, the more quickly you uh, recognize this and realize it and say, yep, that's the reality. I'm never going to sound 100% perfect with my accent. Once you've accepted that, you can just leave that behind you and not worry about it. Okay. Um, there are many English learners who choose to just not speak English because of their accent because they're so afraid of being judged, uh, of being made fun of because of their accent, that they just don't speak, right? Um, especially in certain countries. Maybe you are from a country where people are very critical of you when you try to speak a language like English and you have a bad uh, pronunciation, a bad accent, according to them. But really, you're just learning. You, of course, have an accent because you're not a native speaker. It's not bad. It's just that you don't pronounce things exactly like a native speaker pronounces them. But 
other people kind of judge you for that or make fun of you or there's kind of a, a competition among people with English in particular, right? I know that exists in some countries, so I understand why some people just don't want to talk because they're afraid of being, you know, judged or criticized for their accent. But I want to advise you, recommend you today to just forget all that, okay? <laughs> and accept that you have an accent, that you're never going to sound 100% like a native speaker. I know that, you know, that isn't the best thing to hear, but that's the reality. I've accepted that for French, for example. And the fact that I've accepted that now helps me have conversations in French. Now that I'm speaking like a couple times a week regularly, I don't really care that much about the fact that I have an accent. I care in the sense that I want to improve my pronunciation and reduce my accent, but I don't care in the sense that I'm not ashamed every time I speak French, right? In the past, I was a little hesitant to speak French because of my accent, but now, pff, I don't care. <laughs> now, because uh, I'm not worried about that, I can actually improve. I can practice. I can really uh, just not be so emotional when it comes to um, you know my accent and the way I sound. So I recommend you have that same mindset for English. Okay, English is an extremely, extremely hard language to pronounce like a native speaker. Of all the difficult elements of English. The being able to pronounce English exactly like a native speaker, that's the hardest thing. There's no debate about this in my mind. I've taught English for many years. I can safely say that the most difficult element of English, I think, objectively speaking, it doesn't matter who you are, what country you're from, um, it, it is extremely hard to talk for one minute in English and sound exactly like a native speaker in terms of the way it sounds, your pronunciation. I've virtually never heard that in my life, or I've almost never heard that from a non-native speaker, okay? So just remember that. Remember that that shouldn't be the standard. The standard is to not uh, have any trace of your accent no, you want to reduce it for sure. You want to get your accent less and less prominent. However, your uh, expectations need to be realistic and you shouldn't have the, the weight of this worry, this anxiety about your accent. That is going to stop you. It's going to hinder you in your uh, English learning. Okay, so you need to forget that. Just forget that completely. Okay, so don't expect to sound like a native English speaker. Don't let your accent uh, keep you from having conversa conversations in English. And honestly, English is spoken by so many people around the world as a second or a third language or a fourth language or whatever that... We native speakers expect to hear accents a lot. It's really normal when we hear people speak English with accents. When I say we, I don't mean every single person, but people in big cities, uh, the cities where you're most likely to travel to in the U.S., for example, or in the U.K., or whatever English-speaking country that you travel to, if you go to those cities... For us in these big cities, it's really normal to hear accents. We don't care about accents. It's not something that, you know, is really shocking to us when we hear an accent. No, uh, this is something we're accustomed to because so many people are learning English around the world. So remember that, that, you know, hundreds of millions of people 
if not a couple billion, I don't know, uh, of people have an accent <laughs> when they speak English. So we're accustomed to this. We know everyone is learning English. We're thankful for this because it makes life easier for us when we travel or when we do business in uh, different contexts with foreigners or whatever. So really, it's great that you're making the effort to learn English and you don't need to be ashamed because you have an accent, okay? All right, all that being said, I do need to say that we as language learners should aim to improve our pronunciation and reduce our accent. Considering everything I just said, everything is, you know, I believe all that, that we don't need to worry about this, just forget it, don't be anxious about this. However, at the same time, make a conscious effort to improve your pronunciation as part of your English learning. This is kind of the forgotten part of uh, language learning. We always uh, talk about language learning with the four uh, skills like reading, writing, speaking, and listening. However, pronunciation is almost like a fifth skill. It's almost like separate from speaking itself because uh, there are many people that are completely fluent in English. They sound great in terms of their vocabulary and grammar, but they've got a thick accent. They don't pronounce things correctly, but they speak very well, very correctly in terms of their grammar, vocabulary, sentence structure, etc. So this is kind of the forgotten part of language learning for many people, or it's the part that people don't really spend much time on. You probably don't uh, hear a lot of English teachers really focused on pronunciation. They're usually focused on grammar, or vocabulary, or other things. So it's not easy to improve your pronunciation. I'm not saying that. Um, it's actually one of the hardest things to improve, okay? Uh, perfecting your pronunciation, reducing your accent, that takes a lot of work. It takes time. And uh, really, it requires your dedication to actually noticing what is different about your speech and a native speaker's speech. Um, really, this is one of the biggest things that is going to help you. Um, part of your practice when you learn English um, could be to spend some time uh, listening, but with the intention to really hear what things sound like, right? And maybe compare your own, your own speech to this. Maybe you record yourself and you listen and you hear the difference. And one thing with English is that many people, they just assume that certain words are pronounced a certain way. Um, but in reality, they've never really focused on just hearing the sound analyzing it and thinking, oh, that's actually not the way I thought it was pronounced, right? I've had many experiences with students where they're pronouncing a word wrong and then I show it to them. Uh, I show them the correct pronunciation. They listen and then I have them listen to it again maybe. And then they say, oh yeah, you're right. It is pronounced like that. Why didn't I ever notice that? Right? Because they just weren't paying attention to that element of the word uh, throughout their learning. They just saw the spelling, they knew the meaning, and that was it. But it's good to take some time to actually notice the sounds of English. Okay? So that's one thing I wanted to say. Another thing I want to say is that it's good to focus on things that are causing miscommunications. So for example, the word fit and the word feet, okay? Depending on your native language, it might be really hard to distinguish the two vowel sounds there, fit and feet. However, for a native English speaker, these sounds are very different. And these two words are both words that mean different things. So if you say something like fit, 
we're going to think, oh man, did he say fit or feet? I don't know. And we might feel embarrassed to ask you which word you were saying. And that's a miscommunication. Okay. I've had thousands of those <laughs> over the years with different students. And those should be uh, the first things like the, the top priority in terms of improving your pronunciation. Uh, uh, things that cause miscommunications like that, okay? So that's one thing is that if your accent, your pronunciation is interfering with the meaning, with the other person understanding you, then it's a problem, right? Because we don't want to have miscommunications. If your accent doesn't cause a miscommunication between you and the native speaker, then it's not that big of a deal. But if it does cause some miscommunication, then it's something that you want to focus on. And you really want to focus on what they couldn't understand from you. Like, oh, he couldn't understand when I said this word. And then that can be your focus where you listen to how a native speaker says it, compare it to your pronunciation. And that kind of gives you uh, material to work with. Okay, these are the words that I'm saying that native speakers are not understanding well. Okay, so that's one thing. And then one other thing is that we should focus on sounds that are more easily fixable. Okay, so some sounds like fit and feet, that's a really important difference, but that's a hard sound to correct for some people. You should correct it for sure, but I'm also saying here that there are a lot of sounds that are actually pretty simple to correct. I had a student who would always say the TR combination as tr. He would say like try, um, uh, train, like that. And all I did was point out to him and say, hey, listen to how this actually sounds. Try, train. Tr try to make a CHR sound like ch plus r, tr, tr. And I had him practice with that. And he was able to get it. And he goes, wow, I never noticed that before. And he simply just practiced that over and over again. And after a few classes, he was saying it correctly, like almost 100% of the time. Because it was pretty easy for him to make the ch sound and the tr with the r afterwards. It wasn't that hard. So all he had to do was remember that that's the correct pronunciation, not try, it's try, right? And so that was an easy fix because he was able to make the sounds. It wasn't like, oh, those sounds are impossible, right? Uh, or the fit feet difference, which is a lot harder, right? So, um, you know, if, you're, if you have a class with a teacher and they point out some different errors of yours with pronunciation, you'll probably notice that some of them aren't that hard to fix. It's just that you have to remember this is the correct sound and you have to start to notice that when you do your listening and say, oh yeah, native speakers say try, not try. And it will become natural for you over time, okay? So those are some of the things that I wanted to say here. I know this video was a little bit disorganized. I also wanna mention that if you really do wanna improve your pronunciation and say things more correctly, then I highly recommend that you use my uh, English pronunciation seminars and my sound training videos, which are part of my membership. So I help you train with the different elements, the different patterns in English that um, distinguish a native speaker's pronunciation from a non-native speaker's pronunciation. So. If you want help with that, if you want to practice with those different patterns, then I highly recommend that you join my membership and become Listening Time Super Member or any of the higher tiers. The link is down below if you want to sign up for that. So I think that that will be really helpful for you. And even if you don't sign up for that, in general, I think that um, if you have the mindset of not being super anxious and scared to speak because of your accent. So forget that, but then also have the mindset of, oh, okay, I'm gonna focus part of my practice on pronunciation. 
I'm not just going to do, you know, normal listening and reading and speaking. I'm actually going to focus on hearing the sounds and actually trying to make the correct sounds, maybe taking some pronunciation classes with a teacher. Um, that's a great mindset to have. Don't feel scared and worried about your accent, but try to improve it and try to eliminate miscommunications. Okay. All right. I hope this video was interesting for you. Uh, remember, I never talk about this. I never mention it like all the other YouTubers do, but of course, you know, you can subscribe and click on the little bell so that you receive the notifications when I release a new video. So if you don't want to miss my videos, then remember to do that. All right. Thank you for watching this video and I'll talk to you in the next one.